Good morning, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the carving workshop. I've been painting for a few weeks, so it's good to be back to carving. And this morning, I'm going to start a new carving series based on a magnum cork-bodied canvas back drape decoy. By the way, if you haven't hit the subscribe button and you're valuing the content of my channel, please do that. It helps me out, and then you'll get notification of any new content as I post it. So back to the decoy. This is going to be a cork-bodied magnum decoy. And why am I doing a gunning decoy? Because I got feedback from viewers, particularly new people that are starting out or thinking about starting out, would like to see a simpler decoy. Um, I, the Drake Mallard and the Hen Mallard that I put together, those series kind of lean towards the more decorative, complex uh, side of carving decoys. So this is a great place for beginners to start. As a matter of fact, I would recommend start here. And why do I say that? You need to get your shapes right. And shapes are everything in a simple gunning decoy because you don't have a lot of detail to add on top of things in terms of paint and um, carving. The the carving has to be strong, sturdy. The paint job has to be simple. And uh, I think that's, that's where you ought to start and then move towards the decorative if you want to go in that direction. But get your shapes right to begin with because a bad bill is not going to look any prettier with a lot of great paint detail and great carving detail on it. If it looks like a banana, in the pattern, it's probably going to look like a banana, a pretty banana, but it's still not going to look like a duck. So I'm going to use Tupelo for the head. I would recommend cedar if you're doing a gunning decoy. I just don't happen to have uh, a good piece of cedar in the shop right now. So the techniques I'm going to demonstrate, um, you can use on, on cedar as well. I am going to use the cork for the body. Again, you could choose to use cedar. That's a great material for a gunning decoy. By the way, I got this material from Willie McDonald at the Duck Blind. And Willie and the Duck Blind have been serving the carving community for a long time. Uh, if you need high density cork, he's the guy to, to talk to. I'm gonna put a cedar bottom board on the decoy. And then I'm going to use a hardwood peg or dowel to attach the head to the cork body for strength. So everything is going to be focused on simplicity in the carving. It's going to be focused on strength and durability. So I'm also going to insert a hardwood tail because the tail of the decoy tends to take a lot of abuse. and. Uh, then we'll go from there. So we're going to start with the head this morning and let's get started. Okay, we'll get started on laying out the head. By the way, I did square up a piece of Tupelo. I knew from my pattern that, uh, again, this I want to remind you, this is a magnum size, so bigger than life size. I want three inch width on the cheeks. So I've cut out a piece of Tupelo three inches wide, so it's ready to go. And I've got it nice and squared. So I'm going to trace around my pattern. I like to locate the eye. Now, this is a gunning decoy. This pattern was made for more of a, a decorative, so I'm gonna add a little thickness on the end of the bill here for strength and then follow the pattern the rest of the way around but just leave a little extra material in the bill area so we'll cut that out on the bandsaw and particularly for uh, a magnum I like to make a pattern going down as well, just to get the width of the bill correct and, and uh, make sure that all the proportions stay right 
as we're upsizing this pattern. Since I have a nice square block here, I want to think about and do some planning around where is this dowel going to go and drill this dowel hole into the head while I still have a nice square block to work with. So in order to do that, I've got my side pattern. I'm going to transpose that onto this surface. And I probably can't go right in the middle because that dowel is going to get too close to the front of the neck. Uh, so I want to leave it in the meaty part of the, the head. I'm just kind of sketching a place there where that three-quarter inch dowel should be. And then I'm going to get the center line. And I'm going to drill that dowel hole here. I just set my stop to give myself maybe an inch and a half to two inches of depth. And go ahead and drill that. That gives me a nice square, squarely positioned hole both this way and this way so that as I'm attaching it to the body, I know this dowel is perpendicular to this surface. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut out the, uh, the head on the bandsaw. I normally start right at the end of the bill so I can carefully define where that is and make sure I don't cut off too much material there. And then I'm I have sped up the film here, so this is about twice the normal speed. There I'm finishing the definition of the end of the bill and carefully making a cut from that direction and then from the neck up to meet that cut to finish. Now I'm just using the drill press to Drill through that eye hole location. I like to go halfway through and then go to the other side where I've marked the exact location and go from that direction. Going to develop a center line so I know where the center of this is. I'm going to strike that all the way around the decoy, including on the underside and underneath here. Hey, just a quick tip on upsizing patterns from life size. Uh, just a little bit of math is very helpful. In this example, a canvas back drake, I know the body length life size is 12 inches from breast to the tip of the tail. My pattern that I've upsized is 15 inches. So if I divide 15 by 12, that gives me 1.25 is my multiplication factor. So any dimension life size that I have, like this bill, is a life size bill. It's about 7 eighths of an inch. I'm going to multiply that 7 eighths of an inch times the 1.25, and that's going to give me the width of the upsized bill. I just think it's useful because that's how I generated this pattern, just with the simple ratio math like that. We'll give you the, the width of the cheeks, the distance between the eyes, everything, as long as you have the life-size dimensions, which you can get from pattern books. Hope that's helpful. Okay, that's enough math for, for one day anyway. Now, uh, just a reminder why strike a line all the way around the decoy. Just for beginners primarily, again, it's really important that you maintain that line during the carving process because that is your pattern. And you don't want to lose any of that shape that you worked so hard to gain when you were putting the pattern together. So 
Now I can take my pattern that I generated using math. By the way, I always cut a little diamond right above the notch there to find my center line here so that I know the bill is centered correctly. And I'm gonna to begin to sketch the bill in place. Now this pattern will not work because it's generated in a straight up and down position like this. So you can't just lay the pattern on and cut around it. Pretty obvious, but I just thought I'd mention that. Now I'm gonna use my pattern and determine where this bill should be on the side. And I'm gonna finish the layout work. I won't bore you with that, but I'll show you the results before we start cutting. Just gonna show you one more key dimension that I have in my other videos, but if you haven't watched those, I'm gonna put it here as well. I'm using my dividers and getting the distance from the tip of the bill back to the cheek, right in that area, and I'm gonna transpose that onto the decoy by striking an arc. That's going to help me get the length of the bill set, and that's critical to the way the bird is portrayed. If that's short or long, which a lot of people get that wrong, it's going to look funny, and it's not going to look like a canvas back. Now I'm just laying out the bottom of the bill as well because when I do the coping saw cuts to remove wood, I want to make sure I'm not undercutting or overcutting the profile, profile of the bill down below. So you can see I've got those guidelines on where the cheek should meet the, the bill. I'm going to remove this wood and then we'll begin taking wood off here. Just another note, since this is a gunning decoy, I'm probably gonna err on the side of adding a little additional width to the bill. Not so wide that it loses its character, but enough width to give us that strength we're looking for in the bill. Finish my layout work. I've got the neck identified underneath because this will pinch in slightly down here. And I wanna have that penciled in so as I'm carving and removing wood, I don't start gouging out neck material that I'm gonna want later. I've got the cheek areas identified and then from the top, kind of the wedge shape coming from the bill and I drop a vertical from that line because I'm gonna cop coping saw this off. Same back here, although I may use the bandsaw for these two cuts here. As in my previous videos, I like to use a coping saw um, to make these initial wood cuts. You can do it with a band saw, but the coping saw is quick and it gives me more control than with a big band saw power blade. I'm checking underneath to make sure I'm hitting my marks underneath. It's a good idea to check your coping saw blade to make sure it's not loose and wobbling around while you're trying to make a good cut. Checking multiple times to make sure I'm staying on track. And when I get close to the cheek, I don't want to drive into the cheek area, so I'm going to slow down and be cautious there. And this is an extra step, but I like to do it. I go in from the side and go down and meet up with that initial cut. And again, slowing down, being careful as you get close to the cheek so we don't gouge the bill material. But now I know exactly where that cheek position should be.
since this next cut is pretty deep, it's going to take a little while with a coping saw and I'm comfortable this particular head shape. I can use the band saw and remove this material both sides, front and back. So we'll do that next. Just going to speed up the video here, keeping my fingers out of the way and using those guidelines. I'm just carefully removing wood from both sides. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the back. You don't want a sharp edge on the back of the neck. So leave some material back there. But you can see the head is starting to shape up now. All right, I want to establish where this notch is on the upscaled version. You can see the size difference here in life size versus the, the gunner. And I measured this distance on the study bill from the tip of the bill to the notch, and that is 2.372 and 3 eighths inches. So I multiplied that times the 1.25, that's 2.97 inches, almost three inches then on this bird. So it's gonna be right there. So without this guideline, you can kind of guess at it, but it's helpful to me as I'm scaling things up to do it that way. Okay, I've got that notch located, and then I want to locate the width of the crown. And I know from my pattern from previously making this decoy, it's one and seven eighths inch wide. One and seven eighths is right there. And we know that that is the maximum width of the crown, and then it's going to meet up with that notch in front. And then it's going to tail off, not to a sharp point, but to the back of the neck here. Okay, now we can start some carving work. And the only amount of detail we're going to add to the bill is we're going to round it. I'm going to locate the notch. We are going to put the mandible separation in and make sure we have the right shape on the cheek here. And nice and round, and that's going to be about it. So let's get carving. I'm just looking at my study bill, and you can see that area of the notch is lower than the bill the surrounding bill. So we need to take that notch area down a little bit. And I'm gonna use this 1 8 inch cylindrical, it's actually 3.5 millimeter cylindrical bit to begin to take that notch area down and carefully lower it and leave the bill high In a lot of birds, it's the opposite. You want that notch area on the head a little higher than the bill, but on a canvas back, it actually dives down there and the bill stays high. So I'm using that bit to clear that out. Just paying attention to your study bill and rounding the edges of the bill as it goes down into that notch area. So now we've got that kind of defined. Now I'm gonna use that three quarter inch round nosed um, saber tooth burr. This is a fine burr and begin to round things in general. And I've sped up the video here so we can watch the process, but uh, just so you know, it's, it's at two times speed here. I'm just pointed there. Be careful we don't take too much off that area close to the bill notch. We want to leave enough material there to define the bill as it meets the face. And again, I'm just rounding things in general, leaving the center line intact kind of cleaning up the bill, 
rounding things a little bit. Now I'm beginning to take material off to define the cheek and pull that up into the notch area and define the width of the crown that we established before. So I'm going to take segments of this video and just show you progress as we go. Once the crown width is right, I'm rounding the cheeks. You got to remember, don't lose that line where the bill meets the face. And in general, just rounding things off. Now I'm going to go to the neck. We want to keep that neck um, circle defined and not lose that material, but begin to shape, shape up the neck. Got to be careful here with the grain. Sometimes with the burr like this, the direction that you're carving makes a difference and it can get, uh, it can snag grain. So just be very cautious. You can see I'm just peeling that off down to the, the guideline that I established for myself for the neck. You want to leave the cheeks intact, but round into those. I'm just continuing to use that three quarter inch round nose bit to do the majority of the shaping on both sides. You just have to be careful with these bits. I always try to reposition my hands so that if I would slip, I'm not going to pull the bit into, into a hand or a finger. So just be cautious with these power tools. Keeping an eye on that neck guideline and making sure I'm not carving off too much material down there. Now that I have things generally rounded, I want to begin to define where the bill should be, the upper portions of the bill. So I'm sketching in there where I think they should be. And then we'll get some reference dimensions from the pattern. I'm using the dividers. Another key dimension is from the tip of the bill to the top there where it meets the face. And it looks like I'm pretty close. So I'll give myself a couple of guidelines. And then I'm using that small 3.5 millimeter ruby bit to define those lines, begin to carve them in a little bit. So we have some separation between the, the head and the bill at that point. It's really important on a canvas back that we don't lose that nice slant profile. So I'm just penciling in the, the bill so I can get a look at that, make sure I'm happy with the way it looks. All right, the next key dimension is from the tip of the bill to the corner where the upper and lower mandible meet, the rictus area. And I'm just marking that out on both sides. And then I'm getting a reference dimension from the top of the bill to the lower portion of the upper mandible. So these two measurements give me a good idea where the corner of the, the bill is going to be there. And we need to remove material on both sides in that area. So I'm going to do that with that little 3.5 millimeter cylindrical ruby bit, taking material out of that area on both sides. And then check to make sure that the width of the bill is maintained as it goes back into the face in that area. Now I'm going to change bits to another ruby bit, kind of a bullet shape, and begin to round that area that I've notched out. And I'll do that on both sides and clean things up. Just using the dividers again for a quick reference on that distance so that I have that corner established where it should be. Now I'm going to use the dividers again to give myself a mark where the upper mandible meets the lower mandible in that corner at the rictus. And then using the reference bill, sketch 
the separation between the upper and lower mandible. And this is a gunning decoy, so we don't want too much detail there, but I'm gonna use my knife and score that line carefully between upper and lower on both sides. And then we're gonna remove a little bit of material from the lower mandible. to put some separation between the upper and lower. Again, being very careful. Taking that little section of wood out and then using that bullet-shaped ruby bit to clean things up again. Begin to remove material down there on the lower area. Now I'm gonna use my pencil and define where that lower mandible meets the face and there's a little bit of a droop under the chin there that's characteristic of a canvas back and I'm just used carefully using the knife to remove material kind of a triangular shaped piece of material to form the chin and I'll do that on both sides you may be able to see it better on on this side so I'm cutting down and cutting out that little section of material. Now I'll use that ruby bit to clean things up and round things in that area. Now I'm looking at my reference bill again, and there's a little bit of a groove in the middle of the bill coming out of the notch. So I want to define that with this little ruby bullet-shaped bit. Put a little bit of a groove coming out of the notch and going down the center of the bill. Just kind of characteristic, a little detail, but not too much. Now I'm gonna work on the eyes and make sure they're at the proper width. So I'm referring to my pattern with the calipers. I need to remove material on both sides. And I'm gonna use that ruby bullet shape bit to do that, begin to remove material until I get that dimension uh, to meet the pattern dimension. And a lot of people miss this dimension. If your eyes are too closely set together or too far apart, it really stands out. So that's an important dimension to nail. So I still have to remove a little wood to get to where I want to be on that dimension. And then we should be set. Okay, now I'm where I want to be on that dimension. I'm going to work on rounding the crown. Now with that three-quarter inch saber tooth burr. And I'm being cautious not to take material off of the bill and not ruin work that we've already done up there. So I want to round this crown so that we don't have a Frankenstein looking square profile from the front. We want a nice rounded look uh, from the front of the bird, particularly on a canvas back. Just going ahead and rounding the rest of the head and getting things shaped up. Now to add a little character to the bird, I'm going to define kind of a cheek area, a couple of different areas that are characteristic. Gives a little structure to the head, a little personality. You can overdo this and cut trenches and it looks really awkward, but if, if you do this subtly, I think it really adds life to the head. I'm using that little ruby uh, bullet-shaped bit and carefully carving grooves and then rounding those out into the surrounding areas.
I've kind of roughed those in. You can see it gives a little bit of character to the head. Now I want to work on the neck area and put a few creases in down here. Again, subtly, but it gives a little structure to the neck. I want that big bowl canvas back look, powerful look. A little structure in that neck area uh, helps convey that. Now I'm going to put a little bit of definition from the back of the eye to the back of the head. Give us a little bit of shape in that area and structure. Cast a little shadow. You don't want to overdo this, but give it some additional shape and character. And it pulls that crown back and narrows the crown a little bit towards the back of the head. But you can see that shadow that it casts. And again, you don't want to overdo this so that it takes over the whole look of the bird, but a little subtle shape there, I think, adds a little character to the bird. Now that the rough shaping is done, I'm going in with the sanding drum and about 120 grit sandpaper, Swiss sandpaper, and just smoothing things out in general and taking out the rough carving lines and the gouges and softening things in general. All right, I think we'll stop there for the day. I've got about two and a half hours of work in the head from the time I started filming to now. And in a gunning decoy, we don't need to put any details on the bill. I've got some sanding to do to smooth things down. But in general, the head is roughed out. All right, that's a wrap on session one of carving a magnum cork-bodied canvasback drake hunting decoy. We've got the head pretty well shaped up. I'll do some sanding between now and the next video, and then we'll focus on putting the eyes in and then begin shaping the body. And until then, Tom Christie signing off. Good carving to all of you.